I'm kind of known now for stating that PLACF is actually a scam, but what if I tell you that it's even a worse scam than even I thought? Let me give you some context. So there was this company that reached out to me that claimed they solved every problem that CF actually has. And because you guys roasted me in the comments last time that I didn't do bending tests on CF samples, I wanted to make sure to include them this time. So I tested the specimens of this new material, PLA and CF, the CF just as a baseline to compare. And then I was surprised by the outcome of that. And that's where I decided that PLA CF, or this actually deserves its own video. So let me tell you, it's the first time ever that I actually know the outcome of a video before I even filmed this intro. And let me tell you, it's worse to stay till the end. So the one thing we can all agree on that carbon fiber reinforced prints are stiffer. Or do we? So no wonder you were calling me out for not doing bent testing or impact testing in my last video when I looked into PLACF. And I thought, fair enough criticism. You wanted to do tests that actually play to the strengths of the material and not just test it. So that's exactly what I did. I put up a test which is called three-point bending. It's very easy. You basically just take two supports, you place a part and you try to break it in the middle and you measure the resulting forces. I did those kind of tests for my next video and I wanted to have PLACF included as a baseline to compare them to each other. But before we move on to all the mechanical testing, there's actually another claim which nobody called out, but I think I owe you an explanation. It's when I claimed that the carbon fiber actually ends up in between the layer lines, disrupting the layer bonding, and also it does not bond to the part in the middle of the filament and actually just weakens the part because it's kind of like a contaminant. So to look into that topic, I went ahead and I looked into the microstructure of the part. Step into my workshop, watch your shadow on the wall. There's a VR gun stock doing flips like a train for curtain call. Let's look at what we find out. This is an image of a 3D printed part with PLA carbon fiber reinforced. It's about, not about, it's exactly 200 times magnification. And as you can see, there is a whole mess of carbon fiber going on everywhere. But the one thing we can actually see is that all the carbon fibers that are not ripped out completely like this one, are actually aligned into the flow of the filament. That's something I already claimed, but that's something nobody like argued about. That's just the way it is. So if we zoom in a little more, here you can actually see that I was quite right. The carbon fiber does not stay within the polymer itself. It actually gets everywhere. Here you can see on the outside of the carbon fiber, it sticks out everywhere. If it's here, it's also in between the layer lines itself. But one thing that surprised me a little bit is if you look at that image, you have all the carbon fiber, you have holes where we ripped out carbon fiber, but you also have those huge voids. My PLA was dried, so that can't be moisture voids. If we zoom in a little, you can see they are everywhere. They're around carbon fiber, not around carbon fiber, and they're actually quite big. So as you can see, that's about 30 micrometers of an air bubble. That's a 2K image, like 2000 times magnification. So that was interesting. And I actually, we're not sure if that is maybe an artifact from me breaking it while frozen or even from freezing itself. So what we will do next, and that I haven't done yet, is micro CT imaging to look into an undisturbed part. But let me show you one other thing. If we zoom in to that area, which is exactly the line between two layers, and I go a little closer, you can see that here, a carbon fiber was actually right in a layer boundary. And while breaking, I ripped it out completely. So you can still see kind of the surface pattern of the carbon fiber there. But if you look at that carbon fiber, you see that the plastic actually does not adhere to the carbon fiber. And while cooling, it just retracts from it. That could be the reason why carbon fiber reinforcement in PLA just does not add strength at all. This could be from me breaking the part because like if I snap it, I could like move, it, move the carbon fiber around and disturb the, the polymer around it and press it away maybe, even though I saw it all over the place in that sample. So to get to the bottom of this, if the PLA really retracts from our fiber and if these voids are really real, that's why we're going into CT imaging. 
So I have to speak up a little bit because in here it's quite loud because all of all the cooling of the machine. So this beauty here is called the nanotome. It's an x-ray machine with magnification. So you know if you break your skull or your leg, you have to go into CT imaging. This machine is basically a CT image for microstructure. So I already showed you in my video about medical 3D printing, there I used a cone beam CT, where actually there was a cone of X-rays emitted and catched on the other side by a detector. And so this machine is actually exactly that. You can see here, this is our CT tube or our X-ray tube. That's where all the X-ray is produced. And on this side here, we have our detector. It kind of looks like a screen. And here is my space for whatever I want to look at. So why it is built like that, when you get a CT image in the hospital, you go into this tube and basically this and that spins around you because you're static. I couldn't like spin you perfectly still in place. Here we can spin our sample and we take X-ray images, every little fine step. So after that, we just get a huge stack of X-ray images and then I have to go and digitally reconstruct them so a program will make sense of all of those images lay them over and we can segment them as a 3d model of whatever we want to look at let me show you this is our sample i glued it to this little plastic tube just to get it in here so as you can see i can now bring my sample super close to the source and i can actually rotate my part and because this is a conical X-ray, the closer I get with my part, the more I magnify whatever I'm looking at because the X-rays start here in the middle and they basically shoot out. So I can magnify in two ways. I can get closer with my sample to my X-ray tube or I can even push this screen farther away. I prefer to get as close as possible to get a good magnification because that's where I get the best resolution. So what we want to do with that is basically we want to show the inside of a part, a completely undisturbed layer. How are the fibers distributed? Do we still have those huge voids in the middle? And does the plastic retract from the fiber itself? So let me get this all ready. Fire up the machine. We take a scan. It's quite a long process. It takes about 13 hours. So let's get the machine ready. Fire it up overnight and have a look. Ho, 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 your mom's a f Let me tell you about our today's sponsor, PCBWay. They asked me to inform you guys about their sale going on right now. As you can see, it's right before Christmas and they have a big Christmas and New Year's Eve sale going on. You can get up to 50% uh, discount on your orders, especially those ones in produced in 24 hours or less. And if you follow them on X, you can actually get coupon codes from there where you can add it on the website on top of your existing account. So that's being said, let's get back to the video. So I'm done with reconstructing my CT images. And yeah, as I suspected, the voids are real, first of all. They are actually inside of the filament or of the printed part, not attached to the carbon fiber itself. So, I don't exactly know what those voids are and if they even come from carbon fiber reinforcement or if they're in every extrusion of a polymer. If you want to see a video about that, where we compare, for example, carbon fiber and normal ones, just in those voids, let me know in the comments below and we will do a series on micro CTing different kind of 3D prints. But let's get back to topics. Carbon fiber reinforced. I did the test and I can still see that the fibers are in between printing layers that we already saw on uh, our SEM images. But what I also saw is that the retraction from the polymer from the fiber itself, so the non-adherence and basically the void creating around the fiber, it's real. And you can actually see that the carbon fiber is in no way connected to the polymer itself. So it basically, while cooling, the polymer retracts from it. And you could argue that reinforcing PLA with carbon fiber is the same as reinforcing it with air. You just have those bubbles and you have a loosely floating carbon fiber just inside of those voids. So that would be fine. I mean, if you press on it, the fiber would still get some forces or it would prevent it from bending or whatever. 
But those voids are not just air bubbles, they are actually stress concentration. You have to see if a void is like angled in 90 degrees, which the end of the carbon fiber actually is, you have a sharp angle there where a crack can start and it can propagate from one void to the next void to the next carbon fiber void and actually weaken your part. Also happens in the material itself is, you, know, you all know how polymers work, right? We have a polymer that is kind of like a long string or chain of um, molecules. They attach to each other with a carbon backbone and they entangle and they, they catch inside of each other and they entangle themselves and grab onto each other. And that's how they form strong bonds inside of a material. On a mechanical level, the entangling, but also in uh, an attraction force between atoms. So the thing is, if you now put a carbon fiber in the middle, you basically stop that. You hinder the polymer change from entangling each to each other because you put basically a roadblock in the middle. So all that being said, what actually does that mean for strength? To find that out, we have to go out of optical analysis and finally do our mechanical testing. So let's do that the next. I bought a spool of carbon fiber, thought I'd level up my game. Printed parts like a true survivor, yeah. CF in the name, but then I bent it and it snapped. Ran the tests and checked the stats. Turns out carbon fiber really means just PLA with sprinkles left. Zoomed in real close. Microscope mode, microscope mode. Thought I'd see fibers locked in bees. No code. But no folks, look at that fracture face. Congratulations, sir. Test and expose the thing. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> I built a thing. Let's talk results. We have the results from our three point bend testing here. First of all, I'm going to show you the Z direction. There is not that much of a surprise there. PLA CF actually did way worse than PLA, but that of kind of is expected because we have layer bonding as the issue here. So if you imagine I have my bar that I break in the middle and I push into the direction of the layer. So I actually peel the layers apart again. So we have the same weakening that we had with our tensile testing. So maybe some of you said it would be better even in Z in bending. It obviously is not. What was surprising though is even before it failed, it was actually not stiffer. The stiffness, when you look at that curve, is the angle of how the graph is going at the beginning. So the angle of pure virgin PLA is actually um, more straighter. I don't know how I would say it, but we have more angle in PLA-CF, which means our data suggests that PLA is actually stiffer than PLA-CF. On top of that, it breaks with more maximum force and it needs more energy put in the area under the curve because someone pointed it out in the last video is bigger at PLA. So that was already kind of surprising, but I kind of foresaw that because we're still running into our layer bonding issues. But what really blew me out, and that's why I did this video, is that when I uh, tested the flat laying bars, X and Y, I actually got no meaningful difference. Both materials, like show the exact same stiffness. You can barely see, no, actually at the beginning, you can't even see the curve of PLA-CF because it's covered by the curve of PLA, even though I used very thin strokes. In X, we have a slightly bigger area under curve, but we basically have the same maximum force to break. So PLA does nothing for your stiffness, for your strength, for energy absorption or anything. And so it actually is an even bigger scam than I thought. <laughs> what we haven't touched so far is there is other problems with PLACF. If you handle those parts, the fibers that I showed you that are on the outside of the extrusion actually will break off and they will embed themselves into your skin. 
and you could also brush them into the air and breathe them in. So in my profession, in medical 3D printing, everything containing carbon fiber that isn't completely encapsulated in, for example, resin or whatever, is actually out of the question for manufacturing because the MDR, the medical device regulation, says that carbon fiber is a risk factor because carbon fiber shards, when they break, they get so tiny and so needle-like that they basically can pierce the walls of your cells and damage them. That might be another investigative video, if you like, if we want to look into the health risks of carbon fiber. One last thing I actually want to mention, which loads of you pointed out under the last video, is that there are materials where it's just clear they benefit from carbon fiber reinforcement. And that's absolutely true. I don't call every carbon fiber reinforced material a scam. That holds true for PLA and PETG in the most part, because the only benefit or the only one getting a benefit out of carbon fiber reinforcement in PLA is actually the guy that sells it to you. So while this is true for PLA and PETG, there are actually other materials out there that benefit greatly from carbon fiber and reinforcement. PA, carbon fiber reinforced, peak carbon fiber reinforced, PET, PP, all of those materials are a completely different story. If you like, I could do an investigation into the real carbon fiber reinforced materials that actually work. Let me know in the comment down below. Other than that, I can only say maybe watch our next episode with carbon fiber co-extrusion. So you can watch that video here right now if it's out already. Otherwise, subscribe to Don't Miss It. Switch on for the next episode of Mythbusters because we are apparently the Mythbusters of 3D printing now.